Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today in the Think Tech studios is our regular uh, guest and contributor, Dr. Jojo Peter. Welcome, Jojo. Thank you very much, Ethan. Good to have you back here. Thank you. And we're going to be talking today, we're going to take a little bit of a side, a side note off of education per se, and we're going to be looking at sort of more of a, a sort of political societal issue. That mm -hmm. is, the conversation, it's an ongoing conversation about yes. should, should Chuk uh, secede from the Federated States of Micronesia, and if so, what mm -hmm. are the impacts of that? All right. And maybe you can give us a little bit of background just to sort of, sort of frame this conversation out. Mm. Uh, FSM itself is a fairly new political entity, right? It is. It is a fairly new political entity that actually just come into uh, official uh, form uh, in the 80s, in the late, uh, early 80s. Uh, of course, all of that, you know, was preceded by the trust territory of the Pacific Islands when uh, after World War II. Oh, right, and that had been preceded yeah. by... And the United various... States got itself a, a, one of those uh, uh, territories uh, from the United Nations, uh, one of the... What, uh, uh, but this, it's, it, 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 this uh, territorial arrangement was uh, also uh, part of the United States uh, strategic interest. So it's basically one of those strategic trusts that it was the only strategic trust among the other territorial arrangements uh, in the world after uh, after World War II. Mm -hmm. So um, the the area was uh, became known as the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands, mm -hmm. and it included Marianas, where Guam and uh, not Guam, but uh, nor uh, Northern Marianas, Saipan, and Rota, mm -hmm. all the way to East uh, and uh, the Marshall Islands. Right. So and everything in between. Palau, Yap, Juke, and Pond Bay. At that time, Pond Bay also encompasses what is now Koshraya. Right. So, um, right off the bat in 1961, uh, the, the Micronesians wanted to push for self-determination. Okay. And of course, Guam was already a territory of the United States, so it remains a territory until today. So the first one to go was the Northern Marianas, they negotiated a Commonwealth Agreement okay, right. with the United States, and that's one of the two Commonwealth uh, Rico, that the United right. States have, Puerto Rico being right. the other one. And Guam and, and, um, and uh, like American Samoa are the ones in the Pacific for mm -hmm. the territories for the, for the United States. So therefore, the other, the other nations, I mean, the other uh, districts at that time, they, they were already working on a constitution that mm -hmm. would bring all of the territories together uh, under and, and, and a nation. At that time, there was uh, envisioning a nation. Right. But so by the time that they voted on those, on the ratification of the Constitution, Palau didn't approve it. So Palau went its own way, mm -hmm. became a Republic of Palau. Marshall Islands didn't approve it. So it became a Republic of the Marshall Islands. And the ones that were, the countries, I mean, the states, or territories, uh, districts left in uh, in between, Ponve Yap, Chuk, and then they also created Koshrai to be another uh, state uh, district at that time. So they had four, you know, four districts that agreed to the ah. to uh, uh, the constitution. So they became the. Uh, but you're saying this is almost so. a, sort of by default. It wasn't really, sort of it by wasn't, default. Wasn't a purposeful yes. gathering together. It wasn't yes. historical. Yeah, and that's one of the. The agree, and that's one of the argument that the Chuk State uh, uh, separation movement is making. This like you know, this is not a natural uh, arrangement, so to speak, because you have you know districts. I mean, they have groups of islands that don't speak their own, you know the same language. Right. They have different Chuk cultures. Chuk has right. more locks mm -hmm. and and, and uh, this north. I mean, uh, northwest and all of the right. other nations. I mean, all the other islands. So. Their argument is this. One of their argument is that, you know, it's not a natural arrangement, so to speak. Right. So therefore, there's room for further, you know, a f fine tuning of what a nation in the Pacific Island, sure. in that area, should I mean, be. Yep. In, yeah. In some sense, should right. be along right. with Palau, right, yeah. rather than with FSM. Well, you know, some people have made that right. that, uh, that uh, uh, you know argument, or you know, at least a reasoning that maybe they're a lot more closer to, right. yeah. 
And the other island of Yap and the other island of Chuk are a little bit more culturally and linguistically closer to each other than mm -hmm. that. So, but again, in those, those gray areas and mm -hmm. the fine line, but so the Federated States of Micronesia came into, uh, you know, it came into uh, effect by, uh, in the 80s, and then comes the question of the, its relationship with the United States. Right, and the Compacts of Free Association. Right. Because there were two things that were moving at the same, uh, at the same time, the self-determination, Mm -hmm. and then in terms of relationship with the United States. The United States at that time was pushing for the compact to be the defining terms, you know, of the self-determination. Mm -hmm. But the Micronesians want to make sure that they have a constitution in place that will bring the compact under the constitution mm -hmm. as sort of like it doesn't dominate the sovereignty of okay. uh, each uh, nation. So the United States negotiated three compact uh, agreements one with Palau, one with Federated States of Micronesia, and one with the uh, Republic of the Marshall Islands. Right. And it became effective, the first compact in 1986. Right. Uh, and Palau came much later uh, to it, it their own, right. yeah. But they're yeah. all r roughly similar in, in general terms. The general terms are pretty much uh, uh, similar. Which yeah. the, the U.S. Yeah. is pledged to defend these areas, but also- One of those, from, one of those uh, uh, common uh, agreement is that uh, they should have what, what is called shared defense, right. that the United States will pledge to protect the islands from its enemies, mm -hmm. and in return that they will have access to water, air, and land for the purpose of that right. shared defense. So, and of course there's money that goes into each sure. um, uh, funding assistance to go to further to help develop the right. islands. And, and on the other side of it, uh, that the Micronesians, whoever is under the compact, can travel to the United States really? yeah. openly, you know, without visa, right. establish residency and work and uh, pay taxes like everybody else, mm -hmm. which is what they're doing now. Right. And, and you know, live in, in the United States. As long as they're under the term of the compact, right. that they're allowed to do that. So, right. There were other issues that came uh, in question later on, especially with the Medicaid issue, mm -hmm. where the Micronesians were eligible for, you know, the safety net programs, mm -hmm. and then that changed uh, later on under the Welfare Reform Act of 1996, which the Micronesians would argue that then that means that you're changing the, your terms of assistance or your, what is it we are eligible for and discriminate against Micronesian as, you know, illegally mm -hmm. present when we are in turn, in fact, under the compact legally present and contributing uh, taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So that's a complicated issue that hasn't worked itself out. Right. Now, all along, Chuk has always tried, you know, various times before, you know, uh, during the very first administration of the of the Federated States of Micronesia, do have a separate movement. Mm -hmm. Before the one region, one region in, in Chuk State, uh, the most populated region, um, Faichuk region, wanted to have separated uh, a separate state mm -hmm. okay. from Chuk. Huh. And that went on for years and it didn't go anywhere. Right. So recently, I, the, the, the legislature uh, commissioned a group to look at other potential terms or look at potential relationship change, if there needs to be any, uh, that would uh, better serve the Chukis people. Okay. And the commission went out and they did their work and uh, they suggested and they recommended to the, to the legislature that it should be put in front of the voters an opportunity to vote for an independent Chuk, hmm. an independent nation from the Federated States of Micronesia. Hmm. And that's where we are now. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, so there are a lot of questions in terms of like, so what's going to happen to, if, if, the, if Chuk votes to be separated from, from the Federated States of Micronesia, what does that mean for the, the Chukese people who are now under the compact. Right, exactly. Because the reason why they're here 
in Hawaii and other right. places in the U.S. is under the Compact of Free Association. Right. which if you now, were a nation, they would not have. Right. right. So for a while, the proponents of the separation movement claimed that we can negotiate with the United States mm -hmm. for another compact between the U.S. and then what would then be a Chuk Independent Chuk Republic, for okay. example, whatever that we right. call. Now, there were some points where we were just they were just kind of guessing. So some people said that we were they were guessing because they didn't know what the U.S. position was on it. Mm -hmm. Although some people come out very strong and saying the, you know, the the United States will not. Right. You know. And then later on this summer, I, and I was in Chuk this summer. Later on this summer, the ambassador f uh, for the for the United States to FSM mm -hmm. came to Chuk and he held a meeting, a public meeting, an open forum, and basically said, you know, while the United States will not interfere with the sovereignty or the decision for sovereignty, uh, the right. sovereignty decision of the of the people of Chuk, he can say that the United States will not, most likely not negotiate mm -hmm. a compact with a separate, a separate Jew. Mm -hmm. And claiming that the compact of free association treaties or agreements were sort of animals of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And they, they were born out of the need, mm -hmm. uh, mutual need for the nations and the United States. At, during that time in the 80s, right. when the Cold War was at its, uh, at its right. peak. It, and the logic is that, in, uh, is that the absence of that climate, mm -hmm. which perceived to be now, right. does not lend itself to the United States giving out any more of, that, of such agreement. Right. But so basically saying that, yes, you can separate yourself from the Federation, but we will not right. get into an, an agreement with you. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's a very tricky issue there. I mean, there's lots and lots of different complications. There are implications for the people from Chuk who are now living in the U.S. too. If That's if, one complication right. that has to be, right. that has to be dealt with right. and explain how that's going to work. Right, yeah, and, and, and since <clears> the compacts were with FSM right. four states. So basically we hold an FSM passport. Right. So what would happen to, to uh, the Chukis who are holding FSM passports right. if that thing comes into effect? Yeah. But again, you know, the argument on the proponent side is that it will be a process. Right. And you need to work out the process. Right. How is that gonna, you know, to affect that? You know, it'll take it'll take a, a discussion with uh, all parties. Sure. FSM, Juke, and uh, the United States. Right. So, what we're in theory, yeah, or uh, in theory, those things will eventually have to be decided, right. right? Because there will be a lot of people in limbo whose status will be in limbo. Exactly. Yeah. And we're, we're going to look into this whole business more deeply. Right now, we're, we're, I'm told we're going to have to take a, a brief break. Uh, so, Dr. Jojo Peter is here. We're talking about uh, Chuk separation from the Federated States of Micronesia, the, this planned uh, move, and what, how it has come about. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about what its impacts might be if it, if it comes to be. We'll be back in one minute.
back here on Pacific Partnerships in Education. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Dr. Jojo Peter is with me today, and we're talking about uh, the show is entitled Go Your Own Way. Uh, it, it's re uh, referring to Chuuk's plans to separate itself from the Federated States of Micronesia. We talked a little bit in the first half about the, the history of this, how, how Micronesia had come into being, how, how the relationship of the, the various partners and players, the uh, history of colonialism and, and all that. And uh, now we want to look a little, a little bit sort of looking forward. If, if this did happen, what are the impacts on Chuuk? What are the impacts on the rest of FSM? And what are the impacts on the US? And yeah, also, just, just to back it up a little bit. Sure. Another component of this is that comes 2023, right? a large portion of the funding, the one, the, the part that the United States gave direct funding to the nations, as part of the uh, compact, as part of the compact uh, agreement, will go away. Okay. Or at least that's will be the end of it. Okay. So uh, I know that there is a commission that is uh, you know looking into you know how this is going to work out mm -hmm. and reviewing uh, progress, uh, past progress, and start looking into right. the future of that. So that also work into the into the argument by the proponents that they said, listen, you know, come 2023, all of the compact money will be dried up. We haven't really seen any major, you know, developments under the, that. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, they say that they, you know, it, 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 it's open to question, like, uh, what you guys have already gotten out of the, what has, has gotten out of this arrangement per you know, the funding, for right. direct funding from the... Because the whole idea of the compacts of free association <clears throat> were that these nations who have these compacts were going to build themselves up, become very right. self-sustaining, right. yeah. independent, fully functional right. governments, all their, you know, develop their own industries, yeah. their own sources of revenue, and yeah. to a large extent, that really has not happened, right? Yes, continue the, the continue, uh, they continue to rely Right. On, a, on the compact as a major part of their, their funding. And so. there's, there's a whole other aspect, too, that, that some Chukis feel they have gotten short shrift within the FSM, right? They are the most right. populous state, but they do not get, apparently, at least according right. to some, their fair share of the resources from the compact, right? That's, well, that's one of the major arguments right. that the commissioner, I mean, or at least the commission for this separation movements have advanced, that at least the Chukis should have a sh a fair shot of going at it by themselves, you know, instead of being, you know, connected into this federation where certain arrangements have to be made that they feel does not favor uh, the Chuuk people, at least per capita, right. in, in terms of the, the divisions of the, the funding. Right. Yeah. So. But as you say, I mean, there, there will be vast complications just in terms of uh, where sort of how people can travel among the islands, and mm -hmm. right, if suddenly, if, if Chuuk were now an independent, let us say, an independent republic or whatever, uh, how, you know, yes, that they would have to sort of set up their own process for immigration and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What happens, yes, current Chukis, yeah. passport holders who are not on Chuuk at this point, um, mm -hmm. yeah. do, do they now still belong to the FSM? Are they still citizens of Chuuk? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, and those are the parts and uh, discussions that actually concerns a, a lot of Chukis people, especially those of us who are living outside. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, you know, it's like, what's going to happen to us? You know, at least we'll be undocumented in a way because you're not going to be tied to any any uh, any country after that. But again, they are say they the, the claim is that it will be a yeah, part of a long discussion between. And it's going to be complicated because even there's a certain terms, uh, the important terms in, of that compact that will have to be figured out. For example, this the the, the shared defense part, right? Because the the our agreement is that the United States will continue to have its uh, share of um, control over the you know the land, sea, and air in perpetuity under the compact right. in order to fulfill that shared uh, defense right. thing. Chukis, the part, the part where, you know, the, the at least the proponents of the separation movement who said, well, listen, you know, we're separated from the FSM, 
we're no longer, uh, you know, obligated to right. that part of the because we're not under any compact. Right. That, yeah, then, because then that took us out of the compact. Right. Because we then are removed from the FSM, and the United States has basically said, if you remove them from the FSM, you are not under the compact. We're not going to negotiate a compact with you. Therefore, what does that mean in terms of the, you know, the military strategic defense? Right. Because that's, then there's a hole in it. Right. Because then you have Chuk as a bigger part of the you know, geographical, you know, territory sure. in, in that nation. So. Sure. And, and some group, for instance, like China, could come in and try to make And China this, has right? already been, right. you know, They've been making investments. As a matter of fact, as we speak right now, China is in process of completing one of the biggest complex in Chuk, and that's the government complex. Hmm. It hasn't been built under the compact, and right now, it's coming up really fast. Hmm. They, it's, it's going to be the... The main, kind of like the the state capital here, where you have all of the functioning, major functioning uh, branches of the government there. That, that's all being built by a Chinese company. That's all being built by a Chinese company, and not huh. just in Chuk, huh. in all of the, in many, many of the uh, areas in you know in, in the islands. Right. Around and particularly so. given uh, the the current Chinese, um, how do you want to put this? Movements in the in the South China Sea, where they they have built their right. uh, mm -hmm. runways and, and airports on these what had yeah. just been uninhabited coral reefs before. Yes, one has to be concerned that that there's an expansionist yeah. policy here, right? That that they are trying to extend their influence it's, in many ways. And the, uh, the Silk Road um, right. uh, railway system thing. Well, the, you know, so there's no there's no hiding it. The Chinese are are coming into the in the, into the area. The United States has to figure out what what its uh, you know you know its position is on this, and the Micronesians have already been fully aware and are of what the Chinese have mm -hmm. have done and what they can do because the Chinese made it very clear mm -hmm. you know that they will support you know not this movement. They haven't been out in the open to say that they have supported this movement. Also, there's some talk that they said you know Chinese name has been mentioned. You know, China has been mentioned in uh, in the back of the in uh, background of these discussions, but you know that that's right. It's a major. It's, it is a major event. So yeah, that's a, yeah. a huge factor that, yeah. that cannot be ignored. Yeah, and I mean, this would really uh, this this would have tremendous impacts on. I mean, sort of every aspect of life, right? I mean, trade would would, yeah. would change suddenly. Well, my my biggest concern right now is. Almost all of the budget for education mm -hmm. it comes out of the compact right, right. funding, and I, I like uh, I was there this summer. Uh, the education department and, and they're just just turning the corner on a lot of the big problems now. Mm -hmm. It's a they have a lot of challenge, but they're working very hard, and they they are you know dedicated to making the changes. Right. And the funding has to be there to support these things. And as we speak, another round of that Chemco meeting is going mm -hmm. on and trying to figure out how much money, you know, will go to certain projects that, uh, you know, that, that the Chukis and uh, the rest of the Micronesian people need, along right. with the Marshall Islands. So, uh, again, you know, comes 2023, there's that other thing that's looming right. in the background that sort of exasperate, right. you know, this need to do something. Right. And the, this commission's idea of doing something is like, okay, our solution to this is that let's get out of it now, mm -hmm. or at least get out of the federation. Mm -hmm. But then there's, you know, there's the constitutional question right. in the federation that basically said it, it would be a move equal to treason, treason Treason if Chuk secede from the from the the nation, right? And that it will violate the constitution right. of that they agreed to, right? In, in in the beginning of the the formation of the nation. So yeah, there's a lot of lot of right and, interesting and Chuk questions has, has a, a its own history of being very not being a sort of a unified stratified country, right? I mean, Chuk, as I understand it from Hessel's work, was basically a small collection. I mean, it was a collection of little well, independent villages, basically. Basically, Fran, all Fran Easel pointed out that right. uh, that Chuk has never had any kind of a overarching kind of government ruler yeah. or right. control, right. unlike unlike uh, you know 
point where they were, right, they were under, under the non marquee system and before that the cellular system. And right, most of these other yeah. islands have had villages yeah. that then cooperate to some extent right. or collaborate right. under some island lot right. ruler and maybe right. some multiple islands get together under yeah. even a regional yeah. head and that never happened in Chu. It has this reputation of being a right. very, you know, factionalized right. kind of so, thing. So yeah. one understands that yeah. now being what, being a state within a, a nation is a very sort of foreign concept, right, to a lot of people in Chuuk, basically. That's that's one argument. Right. Yeah, that's one argument. And they said, you know, the FSM thing is not a natural right. an arrangement right. because, of course, you have all of these sort of like right group that have been put together to you know, form a nation. Right. Language is not there. You know, no. the a common language. So, of course, speak English to to conduct business, but. No. Again, you know, the people who are forward-looking said, you know, listen, you know, we have only been doing this for only so many years, you know, you know let's figure out how we can make it work instead of trying to, you know, you know, rip it apart, right. you know, so early. Exactly. There, there may be maybe ways within the, the current structure to make things mm -hmm. work better and yeah. redistribute, reallocate funding, yeah, yeah. and yeah. work out. The United States clearly has a vested interest in keeping somewhat mm -hmm. the status quo there, and maybe willing yeah. to, yeah. to to extend or modify. And I think I, I, I think the United States is being careful not to interfere right. into Very in much. any kind of uh, you know internal sovereign absolutely uh, you know decisions that the people of the uh, the islands have to make absolutely. by themselves. At the same time, you know, it's also watching you know the right. thoughts this thing unfold, it's, and it, they 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 make the comments when they feel they need yep. to make the comments. So. It's a very complex situation. I appreciate your being on the show here. It helped us uh, clear up some uh, issues and, and surface some good, good material for discussion. Thank Jojo, you. very nice to have you here again. And I hope you'll join us on our next episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii.